Hello lovely people, welcome back to Ever Demystified. Today, we embark on a journey to explore the rich and flavorful world of Ewe gastronomy, where food isn't just substance, but a reflection of cultural identity, celebrations, and community. Let's dive into the culinary traditions of the Ewe people from West Africa. The Ewe people, as we have seen, are primarily found in the southern regions of Ghana, Togo and Benin and their gastronomy is deeply rooted in their vibrant culture which is characterized by music, dance and strong social ties. Ewe cuisine revolves around staple ingredients like yams, cassava, maize and plantains. Spices like fiery hot peppers, zesty ginger, and the unique African locust bean add depth to the flavors. The resulting dishes offer a harmonious balance of taste and spiciness. When it comes to traditional Ebe dishes, two names stand out. Akpala and Fetridechi. Akpala, Pla Fetridechi. As you may have noticed, it's featured in two episodes already. Akpla is a soft fermented dough made from maize and cassava, often served with spicy sauces. Fetridechi, on the other hand, is a soup made from okra or okra and is packed with loads of health benefits. Every cooking techniques embrace simplicity and authenticity. Common methods include steaming, boiling and grilling. As we explore the food culture of the Ewe people, we will see these different techniques employed in the preparations of some of their cherished meals. Let's begin with food that typically features as breakfast or as the Ewe would call them, Ndingududu. First, we have Kokli. This is porridge made from broken or crushed corn. Cook it till it's soft and sweetened with sugar, honey, or any other sweetener of your choice. It can be served with milk and granuts as we see here. Its equivalent would be the hominy of Jamaica and Ikwegbimi of the Ga people. We move on to Mori, cocoa as it's known by the accounts, but we call it Moku Jogbo, Moku Jogbo in Ewe. This is also porridge of finely ground corn that's usually kept as a dough. This meal can be made to the thickness you desire over the fire. Much like the kokli we saw before, it can be served with any sweetener and accompaniments as you like. I love to have mine with bread and fried eggs. Bear in mind though, that there is no hard and fast rule about what meals make breakfast and which ones don't. With that said, let's move on to explore a few lunch options. Now, with our lunch options, they can be taken in the afternoon, but like I mentioned before, they can actually also be taken in the morning. Traditionally, the Ibe people could take anything at any time, except that usually porridges would be reserved for the mornings. So, our very first pick is Ayi Bobwe. Ayi Bobwe. These days, it goes by many names in Ghana, especially Accra. Some call it Red Red, others call it Gobe, and for those steeped in history, the name it went by was Yokegari. In Ewe, this is Ayi Bobwe, which was eventually corrupted as Aboboi. Ai is beans and bobwe means soft. It is usually cooked soft and taken with fried ripe plantains and a sprinkle of gari. Kaklo. Sometimes ai bobwe may also be taken with kaklo. Kaklo is a kind of cake made from very ripe plantains and brown corn flour and spices that give it a lovely aroma and taste. Fry them till they're golden brown and you'll have kaklu that looks as lovely as what we see here. Some people in recent times use wheat flour. 
that gives it more of a gummy feel than actual cake. And if you're one of those who call it Kekro or Kakro, say it with me. Kaklo. Abolo. This one is an absolute delight. It is corn cake made by steaming the cake or paste portions till they're cooked. Abolo is slightly sweetened and in Benin it is called Abolo. It is typically eaten with one man thousand, which is basically an entire school of tiny fish. You may add shrimp as well. Yake 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 is a close cousin of Abolo and a favorite in Southern Volta. It is made from grated cassava and brings with it a starchy flavor. Like Abolo, Yake Yake is steamed over boiling water. With some ground pepper or stew seasoned to your liking, you can enjoy the street of a dish with fried fish. Some coke to wash it down is not a bad idea. Some of the best food memories are from the dishes the Ebawu share at evening time. It is a time of bonding and winding down. Let's discover some of the great meals from a Benigba. Jengple or Akpleji. Oh la la! You don't know good food if you have never had a Jengple. It derives its name from its color. Je means red and Kple is the contracted form of Akple. So Jengple or Akpleji is literally red akple. It is akple that is made by cooking brown corn flour in palm nut soup. This mouth-watering meal is enjoyed with lots of proteins, fish, snails, meat, and crabs. It is quite similar to the apaprensa of Akans. I'm hungry now. Ever foods are twinning. Isn't it interesting how many kinds of akpele the Ebers have? This vibrant food called ayikpele is quite the doppelganger of jengpele. The only difference being the absence of the soup. It's made from the same brown corn flour with red beans in it. Most people take it with tomato stew, but I grew up sometimes having it with kontumri and bean stew. Still on the subject of akpele, we have such other types as a wokpele, a wodemi, fufu pele palm nut soup, or fufu pele dedechi. Contrary to general belief and misconception, akpele is not the major staple of the Ebadume people of Central Volta. Staples are mostly determined by geography and vegetation. In such places as Peki, Bandu, Ho, Hohwe and their surrounding communities, yam and cassava are widely grown and form the basis of many meals as well. Fufu with palm nut soup, for instance, is the chief food of the Peki traditional area. Throw in some mushrooms, snails and of course some fish and meat and you have an entire zoo to relish. Akple and Ademedechi. Okay, let's swallow our last akple and move to something else, shall we? Akple is also enjoyed with Ademedechi, a green leafy soup that has much the kind of slime okra has. In English, Ademe is known as jute leaf. To get even more elasticity, okra is added to it and your palates can only thank you for the pampering. Snacks and beverages. Ah, finally, some comfort food and a little indulgence. Ebe snacks are not exactly the quickest to make, but similarly are not so quickly forgotten. Between meals, Ebe's enjoy such treats as achifufui or achifufui as the Anglos call them. Think of them as fried sweet bankun. Very funny, huh? Akwale has become a snack. Another very popular snack is the mighty Agbeli Kaklo. This is Kaklo made from cassava starch and deep fried. It goes very well with fully mature coconut. How about this one? 
know what it is? Joe is a spicy ball of goodness made from groundnuts, brown corn flour, and spices. You should definitely try it. Let's welcome another Ebe ambassador christened Aigbe Biscuit. Biscuit in the Ebe language is Akbono. The main ingredients are cassava starch, coconut, sugar, salt, and some water. Buy Aigbe Biscuits and you have the perfect Agbamekanu for the kids. For what that means, let's talk after the show. Now I think the time is right to wash all of this down with a nice cold drink. Made from corn kernels that are beginning to sprout, Liha is a party favorite and is best enjoyed chilled. You will find it served at different ceremonies and events. The importance of preserving culinary traditions cannot be overstated. Passing down recipes and cooking methods ensures that the essence of epic gastronomy lives on for generations to come. As we conclude our journey into epic gastronomy, remember that food is more than substance or sustenance. It's a cultural experience that connects us to our roots, our communities, and our traditions. There's a world of other Ebe dishes that I have not covered. Which ones do you know? Tell me in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Remember to share generously. Thank you for joining me on this flavorful exploration of Ebe culinary heritage. In our next episode, we will have our first lesson on the Ebe alphabet. Till then, minwani. Le motif à